Easy meals are what it's all about in the wild kingdom. What happens when you feed an animal? When you get a brand new puppy or a bird or any kind of exotic animal and you feed it by hand, what do you think happens? It's pretty simple. When you feed an animal, whether domesticated or wild, that animal is going to realize that, hey, if I come up to this person, there's a chance that I'm going to get fed. Sharks are no different than any other animal in the world. So why is it okay to feed sharks for profit, but it's not okay to feed any other animals? Why are there laws to replace common sense or to reinforce common sense? Animals will be animals. It does not matter what type of animal it is. If you voluntarily present animals with food, eventually they're going to start to be programmed to associate humans with food. And if you keep doing it day after day after day, and all their friends come, before you know it, you're going to have a gang of sharks or animals that are going to be looking for humans and associate humans with boats. And they're going to come and be looking for an easy meal. When you have to constantly hunt to survive, anytime you can get an easy meal, you're golden. And sharks are very smart animals, very curious, inquisitive, and if you start to give them handouts, then they're going to start associating and coming around more and more. It's just how it is. It's, it's every animal, sharks included. Florida state laws say fish feeding is prohibited by means of introduction of any food or other substances into the water by a diver or snorkeler for the purpose of of feeding or attracting marine species. These regulations are developed because of concerns about the safety of divers, surfers, and swimmers, feeding the marine species in multiple use areas, and effects of concentrating and training sharks to associate humans with food. It says it right in the Florida state laws. There is a group called, let's see, Coastal Conservation Association of Florida. The CCA Florida. It's nearly 20,000 members strong. And this group is directly fighting this issue. Most of the shark feeding in Florida is going on on the East Coast, just beyond that three-mile state zone. So once you get past three miles offshore, you're technically in federal waters. For whatever reason, the federal government doesn't seem to care if you have a shark feeding business for profit. It's not allowed in Florida state waters, but if you, as long as you get out three miles, you can do whatever you want. It's mostly going on past the three mile mark around Jupiter and the Palm Beach areas. Sharks of all types not only become highly concentrated in these areas, but it's altered their traditional feeding habits. Now they associate readily available food with humans and boats. Because Florida law prohibits feeding sharks, these dive boats, they go three miles out, just beyond the three mile coastal zone to set up shop. A reports by recreational, charter boats, and commercial fishing boats. They all report that as soon as they pull up to their spots and shut their motors off, there's sharks around or under their boats. It's like clockwork. It's just like ringing the dinner bell. Divers who commercially or recreational spearfish have reported that sharks, they've come to associate the click of a trigger and the release of a spear with an easy meal. A lot of divers also report that whole groups of sharks will just follow them around, waiting for them to kill a fish. And you pull up to spots and you look down and you just see them. It's crazy. A lot of people have it in their head that sharks are aggressive and they're going to come after you. And as soon as you get in the water, they're going to come after you. And, and that's just not how it happens. It's not how it works, especially in our waters. But if sharks targeted people, There'd be thousands of shark bites a day. Sharks do their best to avoid people normally, since we're feeding sharks to draw sharks in to give someone, give a paying customer a shark experience. Sharks are starting to change. There's so many shark species that are protected in Florida waters, basically all of them. You're allowed to keep a bull shark, but Unless you really know how to cook bull shark, or if you really like shark, typically you're not going to target a bull shark. So not many sharks at all are getting taken 
sandbar sharks are a big nuisance along with bull sharks in Florida waters. As far as sandbar sharks goes, they're completely protected. There's nothing anybody can do with them. Bull sharks, it is what it is. So when you have these regulations on these sharks and, and there's no checks and balances, and then you compound that with shark feeding tours that are bringing sharks in and hand feeding them to make a buck and taking divers out to these spots just beyond the three mile Florida state waters limit and dropping divers in, feeding sharks and bringing all the sharks in just for a fun experience. I've been diving and spear fishing my home waters in Southwest Florida for about going on six years. And up until 2022, 2023, I rarely saw sharks. I could, I'd spear fished all the time and rarely saw any sharks, you know, even even spearfishing, wrecks, etc. But in the last two years, 2022 and 2023, especially in 2023, I can't remember going spearfishing and not seeing a shark or going hook and line fishing and not seeing sharks under the boat. Everyone is reporting and says the same thing. Any fish big enough to pull drag is doomed. A very high percentage of large bottom fish king mackerel, large mahis, tunas, cobias, anything of size that's strong enough to pull drag, seven times out of 10 is gonna be taken by a shark. That's why they call it the tax man. That's just how it is. It's an easy meal. So if that's not bad enough, let's go feed sharks and associate them with humans. Shark feeding charters are a massive business in the Bahamas. And if you watch the news at all, people, are getting attacked and killed more often in the Bahamas nowadays. Why do you think that is? It's that American lady from Boston, like December 4th or something along that line. She just got married, paddleboarding with her new husband in Nassau. I think it was sandals or something. Gets knocked off of her board and bitten by a shark. More than likely it was a tiger shark. It could have been a bull shark, but more than likely it was a tiger shark. That story made world news. But what you may not have heard is a few days before that, a female German diver, I think it was West Grand Bahamas and Tiger Beach, obviously the Tiger Beach, world famous for tiger sharks. According to a local news outlet, the German tourist went for a dive at 10.30 in the morning. She had not been in the water for long when she came across the shark. Eyewitnesses report that she briefly came to the surface before vanishing into the depths. She's still missing. No one's talking about it. It took me forever to find that article, too. I mean, if you type in, if you Google shark attack in the Bahamas, all you see is the lady from Boston on the paddleboard. You don't see the German diver because if that news gets out that a person was killed on a shark diving expedition, that's bad business. There's so many shark diving expeditions in the Bahamas that no one wants the bad publicity. I think two or three years ago, when the girl from California was snorkeling with her family, two tiger sharks swam into where she was snorkeling and mauled her to death. The, th the fact of the matter is, is sharks don't target people normally. You know, even though there's, there's an exception to every scenario, I personally believe they see people, they see boats, they automatically think free meal. Sharks are good for the ecosystem. Sharks are very important. I have a big problem with shark feeding expeditions because I feel like it's contributing to the rise in shark attacks, at least in the Florida and the Bahama areas. Here's a good little read. This is a letter written by Neil Watson, the president of the Bahamas Dive Association. He went on to say, some dive operators have chosen to disregard standard safe diving practices as it relates to interactions with tiger sharks and other potentially dangerous species of sharks in various locations within the islands of the Bahamas. In an interview, Watson said, there's not a shark expert in the world that would put divers in the water with chum specifically to attract bull, tiger, hammerhead sharks without a cage. It's putting people's lives at risk. This Neil Watson guy, which is, again, the president of the Bahamas Dive Association, he sent 
cease and desist recommendations to various dive charters that do this sort of thing, but no one's complying because this guy is just the president of the Bahamas Dive Association. The Bahamas are some of the sharkiest waters in the world because all these sharks are protected. So they're going to keep breeding and keep multiplying and they're still going to be protected. And if people keep acting like they're domesticated pets, then it's just going to cause problems for everybody as a whole.